This presentation is part one of a two-part series where we're going to look at Microwave Office as a solution for signal integrity problems. Now, Microwave Office is an RF microwave design package really uh, architected to work at gigahertz frequencies. And for this reason, its uh, applicability to the SI world is really to that part of the SI problem that exists in uh, gigahertz signaling. So for uh, boards or ICs or packages uh, operating in the tens of megahertz or the lower one or hundreds of megahertz, uh, microwave office isn't the solution. But as your signals get up into the gigahertz range, a uh, microwave office very well could provide the type of analysis and uh, design assistance that you need for these sorts of problems. Uh, part one will discuss the problem. Uh, part two will go uh, more in depth into how microwave office addresses um, some of the problems with gigahertz design. Uh, the design spectrum is rather complex as you go across uh, the various types of circuitry that uh, one finds in electronics. And there's really two dimensions, or, or in this instance, we're going to look at two dimensions of the design spectrum. Uh, the first dimension is design complexity. Uh, the most complex devices today are the digital ASICs or custom digital, where we're talking about microprocessors or DSPs with literally billions of devices um, on, on the chip. Um, at the other end of the spectrum is the microwave or RFIC design environment where we're really talking about tens or hundreds, maybe even up to a few thousand devices. Um, certainly a lot less complex in terms of the number of active devices. But uh, if we look at the other axis, we'll see that the complexity arises because of the, um, the frequency or the, or the modeling and extraction aspect of this. At lower frequencies, um, it's really not necessary to consider the interconnects in any great detail, or at least when you're operating in, let's say, the uh, tens or hundreds of megahertz, the interconnects themselves uh, really don't contribute a lot to the design complexity or consideration. And in most cases, there's a step towards the end of the design process where we consider uh, some of the impact of the interconnects. But in general, it's just a matter of uh, verifying that the design works uh, with the interconnect effects incorporated. However, in the microwave world, uh, it's very different. The interconnects in many, many cases actually dominate or determine the performance and uh, ignoring them or not modeling them adequately or not understanding the content of the signals in this regime uh, put the, puts the design uh, in some, some form of jeopardy. Um, so the problem today for gigahertz signal integrity uh, engineers is that uh, using signal integrity tools and models that worked and served very well in the tens and hundreds of megahertz. Uh, we design and simulate things that have very nice eye diagrams, look very, very clean. But then when we actually go and build them and measure them on the bench, we find a very, very different story. So why is this? Why did methods and models that worked very, very well at somewhat lower frequencies all of a sudden uh, give erroneous and even disastrous results? Well, before we get into the technical reasons for this, uh, Steve Corey had a very insightful um, quote that we're uh, referencing here, where uh, in the past, digital design, as I mentioned earlier, was able to, for the most part, ignore the interconnect effects or just kind of touch up the design at the end, verifying that it would work or maybe shortening uh, some lines here and there. Um, but now that the uh, threshold into the gigahertz uh, domain has been crossed, um, these interconnects need to be considered in the full breadth of their description. In other words, rather than just looking at it in terms of resistance or capacitance, we need to look at it in terms of a full description uh, as described by Maxwell's equations. And this is just a totally different world for digital designers who uh, only a, a, few, uh, a few years ago, 10, 15 years ago, in most cases could just ignore the interconnects. Now they're actually dominating and limiting uh, the performance of their designs. So, so why is this? Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's two aspects to this. One is the models that we use, and the other is the uh, signals themselves that are being sent. So let's talk about the models for a moment. Um, at lower frequency, uh, the way signal integrity tools work is they model the lines using RLCs, or, or lumped resistors, inductors, and capacitors, and maybe a conductance, uh, shunt conductance G. Um, and these models have served uh, the signal integrity community very well over the years. Um, and as clocks got faster, there were general rules of thumb as to how to take lines that worked at, let's say, 10 megahertz and make them work at 100 megahertz simply by scaling things. So as the clock got faster, we were able to use thinner dielectrics, go to lower permittivity dielectrics, and make narrower lines. And in this way, we were able to scale designs up in frequency. Because essentially the physics were the same, except that the the faster clock just required that things shrink a little bit. 
And in these cases, the RLCG models work very well, and we can get very good predictive uh, results based on using them. But as the frequency goes up over a gigahertz, the fundamental physics of the signal propagation actually changes, and these RLC approximations break down. So the reasons that we were able to take Maxwell's equations and approximate them with RLC are now no longer valid. Uh, the main cause of this is something called dispersion. In other words, the performance of the line now rather being uh, independent of frequency or at least linear in frequency where we could scale things um, is now dispersive and the very properties that we're trying to extract themselves are a function of frequency. Um, these are highly parasitic effects or at least they would be considered parasitic effects from the perspective of a signal integrity engineer. Uh, and what we really need to do is consider these dispersive effects it, uh, by using distributed models rather than these lumped element models. Um, and in many cases, people have turned to actually using EM solvers or have EM-based models to get the highest degree of accuracy. So because we've crossed over into this new regime of dispersive behavior, the RLCG models are no longer uh, applicable and uh, break down. And so we need to do something different. Uh, let's turn our attention now to the signal content. Uh, for a signal above 1 gigahertz with a very aggressive 20 picosecond rise time, uh, we have a picture of that here of what this looks like in the frequency domain. And you can see that um, to a very, very high frequency, much higher than our 1 gigahertz signal, there's uh, energy content that, depending upon the specification that we're working with, um, may be of interest to us. In other words, uh, let's say we need to consider signals that um, are at least 50 dBc or better from our carrier. So that's all the signals above this 50 uh, dB line here. We would have to consider signals out to almost 20 gigahertz, which is a quite, uh, quite a broadband um, signal. And, and this is just for a one gigahertz type signal. Now the RLC models work very, very well for this regime over here. In other words, about one gigahertz and below, but we can see that there's a significant amount of energy that these uh, models would not adequately um, model very well. So what we really want to do is use um, traditional uh, RF microwave models because that's the domain that uh, it would be covered by this uh, sort of signal content. Traditional signal integrity tools really don't work well in this regime because the RLC model breaks down once we cross that approximately one gigahertz barrier. What we really need are the distributed models uh, that have been used for years and years by microwave designers. Uh, AWR provides uh, model coverage and the ability to understand and analyze these signals across this entire spectrum and beyond. So from DC uh, into the tens and even hundreds of gigahertz is where RF microwave designers pretty much earn their bread and butter. And this is what the uh, microwave office tool suite has been designed and optimized for. Uh, microwave office for 2008 can be applied to SI problems because of this, the broadband models uh, that have been proven for RF microwave and millimeter wave design uh, for IC, packaging or module, and PCB. Uh, inside of Microwave Office is a linear frequency domain solver, which allows you to design and analyze lines of uh, both pre and post layout. And for nonlinear aspects of these lines, uh, there's a harmonic balance solver, which is a frequency domain technique. Uh, HSPICE is uh, incorporated right into the design environment. It's, it's not adjunct to it or on the side, HSPICE is right in uh, the Microwave Office design suite uh, and can handle encrypted HSPICE files as well as very, very large uh, S parameter and distributed models being sent into HSPICE without having to go into an uh, overly uh, time-consuming convolutional mode simulation. Uh, trace models are available for high frequency and PCB module and RFIC layouts can be done right in the tool as well as working with uh, other environments that you use for, for layout. All sorts of electromagnetic analysis tools are incorporated through the EM socket, including the EM tools from CST, Sonnet, and Zeeland. And uh, tuning and optimization can be done either during linear or nonlinear simulation, again, with export and import from very popular PCB tools. So that's it for part one. Uh, in part two, again, we'll go into more depth about how the microwave office design environment addresses some of these needs and requirements for doing gigahertz SI design. If you'd like more information, of course, uh, stay tuned for part two or contact your AWR sales professional or go to awrcorp.com.